It's time for the Gizwiz with Mads Maddest Writer, Dick D. Bartolo. This is episode 1772, recorded Thursday, March 26th, 2020. A little dry humor. this episode of the Gizwiz, we have the Tesla of boats. I have my final in the crappy corner for the sick month. We also have your viewer videos next on the Gizwiz. It's the same old show with Zicky D and OMG chat on your PC. It's time for the Gizwiz because gadgets are his business. They've got a gizmo sickness geek disease. Under pathology. Rows and rows of USBs growing blue and yellow. Get ready for the Giz Whiz now. Now! Now! And here he is, your quarantined but still an expert <laughs> gadget man, Dick D. Bartolo. How you doing, Dickie D? I'm doing good, sir. And you? I'm doing good. I'm doing great. I guess I shouldn't say quarantine, because you're you're not sick. I think there's a yeah, No, I'm not quarantined. No, no, right. Yeah. Stay, yeah. Mostly staying in. Go to the park at least once a day uh, with Charlie. Um... Officially now, Sunday, the marina closed, uh, which really annoyed me because, uh, however, boat owners can go in if they want to check a line or see if the bilge pump uh, is working or whatever after rain. But uh, so I, my, my fear is I'll take the boat for a ride and I'll come back and they'll say, no, you left. You're not coming back. We don't know. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Who are it, you, it, some person yeah. who doesn't belong here? Get out of here. Go. No, it's worrisome because, you know, New York is now, I think, leading in yeah. uh, uh, virus cases. It's and, doubling every day. You know, it's sort of it's like if you get days. sick, there's <clears throat> there's pretty much no place you can go. That's the because, terrible thing. This, the is, this problem keeps building. Like, I feel like just two weeks ago, I was like, oh, the worst case is that someone... You know, who's at risk gets it totally, you know, there's so many aspects to this that you kind of forget and hospital capacity, huge, huge one. Yeah. And I keep get, getting these cancellations for events, uh, except there are a couple in June that didn't cancel. And uh, now they've turning, uh, they already started to turn the Javits Center into an emergency hospital. Yeah. Uh, so it's going to be a long time before there's a convention, uh, there. It, it, it's, it's just, uh, you I can't know, imagine the, the, the amount of Clorox wipes that are needed to wipe down <laughs> the entire Javits Center. Oh my gosh. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I, 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 I was in, uh, we went shopping last night. We went shopping at midnight. So fortunately there were only six people in our supermarket, which is big for New York, but not for any place else. Um, and I said to Dennis, uh, here's a Clorox wipe. And the woman said, where did you get a Clorox wipe? <laughs> what, what aisle? And I said, no, I brought them from home. She, oh, oh, I'll buy them from you for $300. Uh, <laughs> Give them to me. Yeah. Uh, no, it, it, it's, it's crazy. It, it's crazy. And, and, and I read, I think it's called Atlas. I forgot the website that in India today, they announced a 21 day. Everybody cannot leave their home. And that applies to 1.2 billion people. <laughs> Holy moly. Uh, that's like, and, uh, now on. I feel like, well, if I can go in the backyard, wow, that's, <laughs> this is, wow, this is, I, this freedom, <laughs> it's amazing. It, uh, oh it, 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 you know, I, that is impressive. Uh, it, uh, and, oh, so you had an a, a exciting experience today yeah, and, and I want to sure. hear about it because I thought, well, at least my health insurance says that I'm allowed under my plan to see a doctor via Skype or yeah. have, so tell me, tell me how you did yours. So I had, so I had a normal checkup today that was scheduled. And on Wednesday they called me and said, Hey, we're not having people come into the office anymore. We're, do, we're doing telemedicine, which is, you know, you keep hearing on the news is kind of yeah, the yes, yes. kind of available. And 
so I, you know what? I need to check something because I assume that they just called me via FaceTime. Um, yeah, they did. So uh, I called at my appointment time and they checked, checked me in. So they asked all the general questions. Have you been depressed? Is your medication doing fine? These are the medications you're on, that sort of stuff. Right. Um, they didn't check my temperature or anything because obviously no one's, you know, by the way, this is just me in my kitchen. I was in the middle of making lunch as I made the oh, call. Okay. Uh, and so they didn't take any vitals. So I, they didn't ask me to take vitals and like tell them. Oh, they, they didn't. Were. Oh, okay. They, okay. No. Uh, and then they said, well, you'll get a call when the doctor is available. Do you, do you want to take a video call or do you want to just take a audio call? And I was like, well, I'm going to kind of experiment. I'll take a video call. Oh, and yeah. She said, well, do you have an iPhone? I said, yes. So she said, okay. So I guess that if I didn't have an iPhone, then it maybe was, maybe I would have to get transferred to Skype or some other thing, or maybe oh, they would okay, have said, okay. oh, you're out of luck. Um, but, uh, you know, a few minutes later, I got a, a FaceTime call from my doctor and we had our normal visit, and she and I have a blood pressure machine at home, and so we kind of went over the, oh, the okay. stuff from there, and then we talked about all the medication, and, and we just did a normal visit, and then we were done, and it was great. And I'm like, I want to do that all the time, because <laughs> I didn't have to get up, go to the, to the yeah. doctor, wait around, you know, you go show up for an appointment, but the doctor always takes, you know, 20 minutes to finish with the person just before you. Yes, so they yes. can go talk to you. And I, it was gr It was fantastic. It was, yeah, I loved it. <laughs> now, I, um, now I don't know how that works. If you had a, a real sickness, I know that yeah. they can, uh, email prescriptions directly to whatever drugstore you use. Right. And so I don't know if they would tell you to take your temperature while they want. I have no idea yeah. how it works if it's an emergency. I agree because you know, there's certain things, obviously like tests, like anything that involves yeah. a test. You know, I went into urgent care a few months back and they, you know, swabbed me to figure out right. that I had influenza. Um, so that couldn't be done. But this, me specifically, I'll talk about like I had, I have, I've been washing my blood pressure. And so we kind of went over where my blood pressure was at, how much medication I was taking. And we decided to up the dosage. And, oh. you know, it's, it's, you can just do that with a conversation. I didn't need to be there for, oh, okay. for any of that. Um, and then she's the medication we're on. We want to make sure that all the blood work is good. So she went ahead and scheduled me for blood work, which I didn't have to do there. I can and go to, you know, basically anywhere. A lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah a lab, okay. any of the labs around here and, and do it. And she said, I'm ordering it now, but wait a month to get this done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, just, yeah, it'll be in there when you go. When you go in, they'll say this seems really old, and you'll say yes, and it's fine, <laughs> and just do your lab work in a month. Um, and so yeah, it was super convenient. I don't, I can't tell if it was just the subset of you know things that was going on with me that made it super great, but it was really nice. <laughs> well, okay. All right. Yeah. No. I. I. That. That's an interesting. Uh, way to do it because yeah. like walking MDs now, right now you can't go to a walking MD. Uh, they sent out emails. You have to call because that may be too crazy there. And I'll tell you, don't even bother trying to uh, come in. So at least that's a, a, an option. Yeah. And, and I also assume if you're someone who thinks that they have Corona or you think that, you know, you're susceptible to it or whatever, you call in and you would just explain all your symptoms and they would ask you about a few things that probably are identifiers. And then if you are, if they think that you have it, your next step, because you can't test you, go to a drive through thing. Yeah. So that's interesting as well. Um, so yeah, yeah, that just, actually might get you uh, further up the line of being able to get a real, Yeah. Uh, you know, where the, where a, a doctor would call a place and say, you know, I've interviewed this man and all the things say that he should be done something in person. Right. That that's a, that's a good idea, actually. Yeah, exactly. Uh, a way exactly. to start. Exactly. And I could really see this being a uh, 
I could see insurance companies getting behind this a lot because I think that in in the you know model of the world that I have in my brain, what will most likely happen is insurance agencies are going to say, okay, well, if you want to go to your doctor, that's a fifty dollar copay, but if you call into our doctor, that's free, and you can do all these things over the phone for free. And then, oh, you need some testing done? Go to this location that we've already worked out. And so all of a sudden, yeah. your doctor becomes a very virtual experience, unless if you have a few you know, things that need to be done in person. Yeah. Um, and in a thing like this, they probably have doctors standing by all over the country. Right. So that if New York is loaded up, you could get a doctor in California. Right. Exactly. Uh, because he has, he can email your local drugstore. Exactly. No, I think it's a good, it was actually my insurance company who s sent me the email and said, do you, do you know that it's very easy for you to use a virtual doctor? Yeah. And so yeah. I figured it would be easier for them too. Yeah. And it's, it's only a matter of time until you're connecting to someone who's not even in America and then not even a human, you know, once that Turing <laughs> test thing gets thrown out the window, you know, you're talking to AI, well, check your, check your temperature. <laughs> <laughs> and now when the AI says, have you turned it off and on again, that's when I'm going to get a little bit. Yeah, you know, exactly. Moved. Exactly. I feel like. Are you, you going to be home or going to send a robot to your house? <laughs> yeah. You know, I could actually, you know, for some tests, what if they just mailed you the kit and then you mailed it back oh, to them? Oh, you know, that's not a bad idea. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Uh, so it's it's uh, I I've been as and I said this last episode, but as you know, horrible as this entire event has been for all of humanity, it has been so interesting to see what his what ingenuity has come out of yes this and and how it's forced people to make such drastic changes. Well, what you know, what are those changes? has been so curious and cool to kind of see. Oh, no. One, one I saw last night was so clever. It was an old folks home, and they let the old people take turns sitting in the window, <laughs> and you can drive by and pull up and say, hi, how are you? What are, you know, what did you used to do before you retired? Yeah. <laughs> Have little conversations with people, even people you don't know, and, and they drive on, and, and the people in the, in the home thought this is great. Yeah, of course. It, it was, it's like uh, live television, yeah. you know? Drive-by conversations. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so anyway, so far... Um, we're, we don't have it as bad as you do, Dick, but... No, uh, yeah, I know, I know. Here so in Dallas, I'm... it's definitely been locking down more and more. and But in general, things have been okay. Yeah, no. Well, we, we plan on staying in it as much as we can. Right. And coming out the other end, well. Yep. yep. Stay safe, everybody. With that, maybe we should jump into some gadgets. Okay, all right. So uh, I found a new place to buy gadgets, and it's in my video. <laughs> the Gizwiz found a new place to spend money on the internet. It's called Until Gone. All oh. right, and they just have fun stuff. For example, the Adoro Surge Wall Charging Tower with 12 outlets. And dual USB ports, twenty bucks. Except they had a fifteen percent off day or something. Anyway, it was uh, sixteen ninety nine, and this is what it looks like. All right, that's what the package looks like. And the works. Ta da! Ooh, I like using this. Uh, I, uh, I I said send it in a blister pack because I want to use my works. <laughs> I want to work for it. <laughs> if you don't know about that, it's Zip Snip from Works, W-O-R-X. Uh, all right, so this is it. Uh, all right, first of all, I'll tell you something I like right off the bat. There are a lot of these out there that are designed to go into a dual outlet. So there are two three-pronged plugs 
and it takes up a whole outlet, which is fine because you're getting a lot more outlets. But sometimes I like to add them to the end of a heavy duty extension cord. And you can do that with this one. Okay. Now, I don't know if these move. Okay, they don't. So now, <laughs> this is what we have. Let's see. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 6, 12. And we have two USB ports here. Now, the one of the problems with uh, the company Until Gone is they don't put much information on. And it didn't tell you how much charging it was. It says, oh, 2.4 amps. Oh, 2 Okay, 2.4 amps combined. <laughs> All right, so if you use one, you're going to get 2.4 amps. If you're charging two things, it's going to drop down to 1.2 amps. I mean, it'll charge things, but not really super fast. And um, 300 power surge, joules protection, which isn't much. Anyway, if you needed to add a lot of outlets... I think this is good. The problem is, I just want to see. So if you're putting in something, a big plug, you, you can probably, it, it'll probably just kill one, uh, one plug. It looks like I can still plug something here and here. In the front, that's going to, uh, I guess you could still get something in here. Basically, if you're using a lot of transformer plugs, the way to do it is plug them all in at the bottom, all right, so that all the plastic and housing is out of the way. And that way you can put regular lamp plugs uh, in these. It does have lights, all right, so I don't know what we'll learn from this, except... Uh, flip that um, over there, go flip it. <laughs> all right, we'll plug it in at the bottom. And... Oh, okay. So we have two LEDs, and it's typical. There is no... Uh, nothing here that tells you what they mean. So I assume that one will be... Boy, it doesn't even say on them. One is going to be power, and the other is probably going to be that it has the uh, circuit breaker protection surge protector and that when one of them goes out the surge protector protector is burned out or off uh, but it's good at least that you know there's, there's power in this entire device uh, again it's 20 bucks and actually it's nicely built that is pretty cool for 20 bucks yeah and uh, a it, website it, Ooh. <clears throat> until oh, they have they have a ton of stuff. Don't buy it on the website, by the way, because on their website, it's, it's uh, 40 bucks. Uh, oh, oh, you're looking at the, uh, oh, go down. Look at what's on the Daily Deal today, Chad. Go back up a little. Uh, if your dog is indoors, the pet site, uh, indoor pet uh, treadmill. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> what? How? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that was at a pet show where they, they had one, and oh my and gosh. and a woman came in with a dog, and uh, she said, "Can I try it?" And I said to the woman, "So he's never been on one of these before," and she said, "No." And the woman with the company said, it "It'll take me like two or three minutes," and they like put the dog on the treadmill, stopped. And they hold a treat at the front of the treadmill. And then they start it just a little bit. And the dog is very interested in the snack. And so they just start walking. Um, and pretty quickly, the dog didn't mind the treadmill at all. That's so, so funny. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, I mean, it's uh, compared to the ones that I've seen, $300 is not too much money. Yeah. It looks like there's a little digital readout. And that's the way it works is it could be up there for days if they have a ton of them and people aren't buying them or you could go back in four hours and it could be gone, but it's just a fun website to uh, go through. Yeah. And this reminds me a lot of way back in the day, woot.com. They would do this where they would have. Oh, woot. Woot. yes. You know, woot is still around. Yeah. But it's owned by Amazon now. And yes, it's like, it is. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's weird. I used to love <laughs> t-shirt woot or shirt woot. I, I forget what it was called. Oh, and then there was, 
didn't they do like once a month or something? I remember Jamma B would be up all night ready to dial in. I oh, think God. I yes. think that the deals that the deal they were, did this thing where they would you could spend five bucks and you would get a bag of yeah. crap and you didn't know yes, what it was yes, gonna yes. be. And there was always these stories of people that got 55 inch TVs and you know all this insane stuff from the the bag. Uh, it was yeah. Woot original woot.com was great. It was fantastic. And this is what this reminds me of which is kind of, I don't, I don't I haven't even looked at Whoop for forever, but it reminds me a lot of it that you got all these gadgets that you can just kind of pick up and then once yeah. they're out, they're uh, out. Uh, Woot, since, since I am uh, Amazon Prime, I do get stuff from Woot, and they know that you're Amazon Prime, so they, they ship it for free. But it, there's some fun stuff here that you don't yeah. find on other websites. I'm I'm going back to Woot. Let's let's take a look. Oh yeah, take take a look. Oh, there's a big. Eh, okay, maybe later. Okay, we got laptops. Yeah, MacBook. Well, that's not. That's a, a big one. Um, this is so different. I I don't understand this entire website, but <laughs> <laughs> there you go. So Woot. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's where Amazon. I don't know how it works. I don't know you know, where like the whole soul. I was going to say just it's where Amazon dumps stuff, but Amazon really doesn't own anything, right? Yeah, well, uh, they could. So I mean, they might, they might own all their uh, X Fire tablets and yeah. stuff that they didn't sell. They do. They do. Amazon is confusing because a, a big portion of it is the marketplace which is basically people who have bought stuff and they set their own price, but then what they do is they ship that stuff to Amazon's warehouse with a warehouse fee, and then Amazon will ship it from their warehouse immediately because it's there. Um, but Amazon does do a lot of Amazon Basics stuff, and I'm oh, that's right. yes, sure you're right. that they are buying their own stock of certain things, um, so yeah. Uh, I, you're right about that. I forgot. So Beatmaster said, did you read the text for the MacBook Air listing? If Jobs were with us today, he'd think he'd want to buy one. <laughs> he'd think he'd, I think he'd want you to buy one. If Jobs oh. were with us today, <laughs> I think he'd want you to buy one. Oh. Oh. This is interesting. I mean, I, I have seen, getting a deal on an Apple laptop, that's hard to do. So That is, yeah. You know, might be something to look at later. But uh, very cool. So uh, Woot still exists, but also now until, until gone. gone. Until okay. gone. Okay. Yeah. Just check it out every once in a while. Very and cool. um, okay. Yeah, that, I like that. And then my next thing um, was a totally different different experience. And this is that. <laughs> hey, the kids was we're going to talk about Chipolo. If I'm saying it right, Chipolo. Uh, it is a, uh, it was hopefully a device finder. Okay, so I'll tell you the backstory. When I shot my ABC Toy Fair spot at the Javits Convention Center, I was wearing a wireless mic and they handed me a wireless hand mic so that as I walked around, if I wanted to talk to somebody, I could. And we would play with toys and I would put the mic down and we would go on and I would leave the mic behind. And the producer was n uh, very unhappy because the mic is 500 bucks. And uh, ABC frowns on you coming back without them. So I thought if I had a device that I could, you know, tape to the mic and never forget it. So online, I went to a lot of websites. So Chipola One, the 2020 model, the loudest water-resistant Bluetooth key finder. And this is what why I bought it. Be alerted if you have left wallet or keys behind. All right. So I got it and downloaded the app. And it didn't work. Zero. All right. So what's nice about this, I'll show you at the end. You can flip this open and put a new battery in it. That was very attractive. This is the battery that was in it, okay? Uh, 
Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, you can see it dying right, in so, front of you. Yeah, it can't even Once power the little it was needle. Twenty thirty-two for more Tons than ten seconds. Those. I put a new one in. Um, it it made it with the phone, but it made with the phone paired with the phone. One I one out said. of every four times. Okay, so we're recording this, so I'm sure it will mate with it because because we're doing it and we don't want it to mate. Or we want to show how it didn't mate. Um, I emailed the company. They said, well, first of all, push the button and make sure, push the button for 30 seconds and that will reset it. Well, there is no button, okay? But my guess is the dot is the button. So we're going to hold the button in for 30 seconds. Oh, I heard it, heard something go down. Uh, in 30 seconds, it should reset and it should notify the phone. Uh, ta and this would be great uh, if it worked. Uh, the is that thirty seconds? We'll give it a little bit more. And no, this is one of the times this decided. I'll push it in. No, I can feel. Oh, there's a button in here. I can feel it connecting. Uh, all right, so it didn't connect. Um, and then what happened was, at the end of the day. Oh, it's still up here. At the end of the day. It said, your backpack was last seen on March 8th, near your current location. So it would do a map where it was seen. But I needed it to sound as I left. And it's Bluetooth. And, you know, even if it would sound within 30 feet, that was, the closer it sounded to where I left it, the better it would be. But basically, when I did get it working, I left it on the desk. I walked out of the apartment. I, I, I walked out, closed the door, walked 30 feet away, nothing. Then I left the door open, walked 10 feet. No, it, it just didn't work. So anyway, I'm going to send it back. I bought it on March 2nd. They're 25 bucks, and they come in many colors. But this is what's not, neat about these. The tile, I believe you have to throw the tiles away. Although when they the battery might have dies. It by now. But there's a little indentation there. For a fingernail, it says, and, oh, you know what, I know what I, I should get, oh, there it goes, okay, uh, 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 okay, so there's, that's how easy it is to replace the battery, so basically what I'm going to do, they're going to take the dead battery they sent me, put it in there, and send this back. <laughs> um, so if you had great luck with yours, would you send me an email? Um, gizwizbiz at gmail, because I found that this one did not work for me. Uh, so there, replaced now with a dead battery. So, so uh, have, you, have you ever used that, that, that from that company? Not from that company. So I've used two other companies, Tracker, without an E. Uh, and but, tile, but they 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 don't beep your phone if you leave. It does they have do? that functionality, and I think tile oh. does too. But in all cases, they don't work that great. <laughs> oh, because I think first off, the app is just not constantly looking, um, and so it'll alert you when you're like. A block like a city block away <laughs> not like a few feet away um in my experience now the chat room i'd love to hear from you guys some people are saying my tile works fine um and so uh, i'm definitely but it definitely does have that functionality 100 percent um now i do know that tile also makes a few versions that are that do have user user replaceable batteries. Oh, uh, okay. And like when you walk away, do you hear a beeping sound or? I think it alerts your phone. Is what happens. Uh, yeah, that, that's what I want because I actually phones. use the phone to to uh, do videos. So I would have the phone with me. Yeah. Basically, now I, I want to. I also do the same thing with my backpack when Dennis and I are filming. I put the backpack on the floor, do the video, walk away, and leave the backpack on the floor. So if tile works, I'll just buy one of those. And 
Oh, here it is. Okay. Dr. Morbius says, Tile has a button that beeps your phone. So, yeah. So, Tile has a physical button on basically every tile, just kind of like how they were saying there was a button on theirs. And when you double click it, it will ring your phone. Oh, um, okay. So, that that's, I think, what Dr. Morpheus is saying. Um, I'm trying to find <laughs> what you're talking about, which is when, when... I'm positive that it has this feature that when the connection is broken, that it will yes. alert my phone. And that, I'm... That's exactly what I'm looking for. Positive that it does it. And I'm looking in my settings right settings right now. Um, there's a section in here in this app called Smart Alerts Beta that I have to unlock Tile Premium to get access to. So I'm afraid that that might be the prob the thing that I you might need Tile Premium for. Oh, okay. Um, more off. You know, uh, in some review, I read something that it did that, but there was a monthly charge. That might be it. That um, might be it. Unfortunately, it doesn't really tell me what smart alerts <laughs> do. It just tells me that I need to buy premium in order to see it. I'm pretty sure that it... Uh, I'm basically positive that it exists, but... It exists, okay. Um, but it's going to cost you, pal. Yes, exactly. <laughs> um... And the tile, so there's a whole bunch of different tile versions. There's the tile mate, tile pro, tile sticker, tile card, all these different ones. Some of them are user replaceable. I believe that it's the tile mate that is maybe the tile pro as well. And, but the tile sticker, now, is this something that you want to stick onto the microphone? No, now, now I want it. So I can stick it on my backpack. Perfect. Okay. So, so that when Dennis and I are filming, I don't leave right. my backpack when we go to the next booth. Perfect. So with that, you can just throw it in a pocket so it could be any size. I have... Yeah, size doesn't matter. Right. So I've played with all of the different sizes, except for the Tile Pro, which is basically the Tile Mate, just a little fancier uh, with like aluminum. Um, and the Tile Sticker is nice because it does have a sticker, but it's not, it's still like about a fourth to a half inch um, thick, and then they have a credit card size version as well, which is fairly nice as well. So uh, there's a whole bunch of whole bunch of options for okay. you there. Tile's definitely the leader in this category. Apple is rumored to come out with something later, and then Tracker is the other company that I would suggest. Tracker has a really cool add-on where you plug it into the wall, and when something someone comes into the area where it can connect it will like alert your phone. And so if you're, you had a child that had a tracker on their backpack, they could come back home and it would like alert you, hey, they're home. Oh, okay. Or if they left okay. the house, then it would alert you, hey, they've left the house. Oh, cool. okay. So I'll tracker check is the other company to check out. Check them both. <laughs> With that, we got one okay. more fancy game. One more, okay, now it's not my video. <laughs> because when you hear the price, you'll find out why it'll never be our video in our lifetime. Okay. So, uh, boat us, boat us is like, uh, the triple a for boats. I've been a member since the day they've started. Uh, and they emailed me and the headline was we test the Tesla of boats. Um, and they had a video and, and I, I, know the guys over there. So I asked Scott, who's a VP of uh, public affairs, can I roll this into the Gizwa show? And he said, oh yeah, just say uh, it came from Boat US. So this is the, so we'll show you an all electric speedboat and you guessed the price. Okay. okay. Uh, so Chad, what was it? How much did the first Tesla cost? Do you know? The first one was, ooh. I'm gonna say I like know. sixty-five thousand at like a base model, but like it can. Oh get up no, to the like... first, the very first one they sold. Oh, only oh yeah, sold like the Roadster. Four. Oh, you're right. Um, yes, the Roadster. That was like hundred and fifty. Yes. I don't know, something like that. It, it was over a hundred thousand. Yeah. Okay, so keep that in mind. The first Tesla was over probably a, about one hundred and ten thousand. So mm -hmm. how much would a speedboat cost? like this okay okay here, here it is just the music is adding some zeros <laughs> no i'm just kidding uh 
Wow. I uh, started this company in boats uh, about uh, two years ago. Uh, we've been working really hard developing this first uh, electric high performance runabout. And when I mean high performance, I'll be happy to go head to head with another 20 foot uh, gas powered boat over here. We have a better hold shot, we have a better top speed on this boat, we can uh, really do it. And uh, the goal for me was like, look, I wanted to develop a green boat, but I was not willing to sacrifice the performance. I like going fast. But for me, performance is also efficiency. So we set out to build a boat that was light, that was stiff, and the way to do it was to do a complete carbon fiber construction. <laughs> Even the cover on the motor is carbon fiber. I'm absolutely that adds some zeros. about lightweight and strength on this boat. Uh, this is a ZR2. This is the runabout configuration. In a few months, we're going to be launching the ZRT, which is going to be a tender version of this, which is going to be a, a bow rider with a center console, open sitting for 10. Tender market is a big part of what we're doing. We truly believe that uh, uh, putting electric boat in the big yacht is the future. This particular boat uh, has a range of about 80 to 100 miles, depends on your speed. On a full charge, uh, top speed of uh, 30 knots. One 30 knots is about, about 35 miles. To charge this boat costs about $5.50 on average in the United States. I uh, challenge you to go take $5.50 and buy enough marine gas to go 80 miles with that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, at the dock we have a dual charger so you can hook it up either 220 or 110 at 220 it's going to take somewhere between uh, three and five hours you can regulate how much power you pull in so that really depends on the breaker on the dock at the regular marina you're going to be looking at about three hours and uh, 50 minutes or so to recharge it the really cool thing about this boat is as a lake boat or a canal boat in the overall roundabout is that um, it's super quiet so you can get there you know, comfortably. The boat is easy to operate. As, as you can see, all electronic switching. We don't put buttons anymore. Everything we do is uh, uh, using the BNG and Naviop operation. So our running lights and everything else is built in here. So I have to guess the price. Yeah. Now the the guy has a good option. He said that he thinks the market for this, a big market, will be to use as dinghies for, for yachts. <laughs> luxury yachts. Yeah. You know? Which uh, those so run in the millions, right? You're getting there. I, I'm the thinking... whole rig weighs um 1,750 pounds. I, I, my guess would, would, so super yacht, millions and millions. Yeah. The, oh, this oh, yeah. boat, I'm going to guess like a half million, 500,000. Um, that, um, it is, that was, what was yours? 500,000? Oh, yeah. uh, no. Chad, it's on sale. Oh. It's only 250,000. Oh. So I don't know. I don't know anything about boats. You just put <laughs> boat in the word, and I'm just like, mm, it's probably 100k. I don't know. <laughs> uh, right, right, right. No, no. Um, but but still, I mean, for a D, so compare that to what a normal. So you know a, what you would use this for is if you're on a super yacht and you want to go to a beach, you can't pull the yacht up to the beach, so you use no, this yeah, dinghy. Yes, yes. To, it, 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 even more than that, like in New York City, the yachts. Dock Stay in the away. middle of the Hudson River. Yeah. Right. Okay. And this is a very funny story. So I'm at the marina and I see this magnificent yacht. Uh, and someone told the name of it. And I looked it up on uh, Google. And I mean, the entire back of this boat falls down yeah. to make their their own pier. And then they roll out on the pier a couple of speed boats, uh, a few uh, sea dews. So anybody on board can take a toy. So anyway, this yacht tender comes rolling in like four outboards on the back. Deluxe leather seating all around. Captain at the at the helm with his hat. A lady walks down the dock. The guy hands her a dog, a little dog. She goes up, walks the dog in the park. 
20 minutes later, comes back down, oh my hands God. the dog to the captain. Captain takes the dog and the yacht tender goes back to the yacht. <laughs> so it's a, it's a little they, sad when a dog has a way better life than you. Yeah. You know, just like <laughs> I, I, thinking, I couldn't aspire to have the life of that dog. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking if they spent all that money, I think it had a bowling alley. Why didn't they just build a garden with a fire hydrant? Yeah, exactly. No, just um, put down some of those uh, pads, those absorbent yeah. pads. Maybe, maybe, maybe they have that, but they also thought he'd like to really walk yeah. around in, in some place new. Oh my God. But they often send in yachts like that uh, to pick up the groceries. Right, right. So uh, how much so would a the, boat like that normally run? So that, oh, not the probably, super yacht, but the, the thing goes yeah, back and probably, forth. Probably, uh, oh, maybe, you know, actually like a formula that like that would, would be 175,000. So it's not that much more. The thing is a formula would have a bar and, right. uh, you know, and this basically just has a stereo and some seats because right. they're trying to keep the weight as Down. low as yeah. they can. Now, um, do you also feel like this would be, so the biggest thing with my electric car is charging it from home. If you are in a situation, so you, this probably wouldn't be on a dock, it'd be on a boat. Would it be able to charge it on the super yacht, you think? Oh, oh absolutely. They're oh, gonna okay. have mammoth generators. Okay, oh, okay, yeah, oh. Gener well, if you're generating, oh. isn't, isn't it like just using gas? I don't, isn't. Oh, that's very, that's interesting. Isn't yeah, that is interesting, yeah. I, I mean, I have seen like you, so a few YouTube videos of people who have big solar arrays, but I never thought that those solar arrays were enough to charge like a something like that, like a big boat that, yeah. Well, yeah. let's put this way. Uh, my guess is if he sells six a year, that's enough to keep him <laughs> happy and in business. <laughs> exactly. So they're, they're not looking at volume. Yes, true. Uh, yeah. yeah well, you're not going to see this on until true. gone. <laughs> and, yes, exactly. And also, if you're the type of yacht owner that wants a fully electric Tinder boat, you're probably going to be able to maybe th throw a few extra solar panels onto your mega yacht to be able to handle yeah. it or yeah. have this design. Oh, you, yeah. You know, yacht. someone in Florida who has a gorgeous home on, True. you know, Palm beach or, uh, wherever <laughs> yeah. Fort Lauderdale, you would just have this out in the, uh, on some davits in the backyard and you have no trouble, uh, keeping it charged up. Yeah. It's just interesting. It, it certainly is the first electric boat. Normally electric boats been around a while, but, they go three miles an hour, <laughs> right? you know, uh, and I said, it's, it's only three miles an hour. And the guy said, well, if you want to push it, you could go three, three and a half miles an hour. <laughs> um, so this, this one goes, uh, 35 miles an hour. Anyway, it's just something fun to talk about and think about. Yeah. But totally. not, not, for, not for long. Yeah. Uh, with that, let's move on to do, do, do. Chad, you, know you don't need it, ha. but you might yeah. want it at oh. Chad's Crappy Corner. Get it. This is a thin one. We got quite a small gadget here for uh, for the week. Ooh. I recorded a video about it, so we'll just jump straight oh, okay. into the video. Hey diggity, so here is another gadget for when you are sick, and this isn't really for when you're sick, but when someone is sick around you and you don't wanna take the temperature all the time. This seems almost too good to be true. It is called Fever Bugs, and these are little stickers that you put on to someone and then it will tell you their temperature. It only has four different temperatures that it can tell, and so it's not incredibly detailed, but 99 degrees, 101 degrees, 103 degrees, and 105 degrees is a lot of information, and if obviously you saw someone was in 103 degrees and you definitely don't want them to get to 105 degrees, that is uh, a time that you would start panicking. <laughs> so uh, let's, I'm gonna test these guys out, and the way that I'm going to test them out is currently I have a bag next to me filled with water, and I have an instant read thermometer stuck in the bag. 
And so what I'll do is I'll take a sticker and stick it onto the side of the bag and we'll see what these guys do. Okie dokie, so these are them out of the packaging. I read through some of the instructions. So what's really cool is that these will last for 48 hours, which is kind of cool. They say optimal placement is on the forehead, under the armpit, on the chest, or behind the shoulder blades. I'm gonna go ahead and stick one on me. I guess I'll put it on my forehead here. Um, and there is a normal um, thing that should light up if your temperature is just fine. Obviously I can't see myself, so I guess this is kind of silly. Um, I'm also gonna stick one on this bag right here. So the N is for normal, and then it'll go up if uh, any of the temperatures change. I'm also gonna stick one onto this bag right here. Currently, the instant read thermometer says that this is 104 degrees, 104.5. So maybe we will see all of the other things sort of light up. So we should see all the way up to 105. My hope was to get it at 103, and I may throw an ice cube in there to get it. So it looks like 105 is showing up there at the moment. We're gonna give it a moment. Um, I'm hoping to get the temperature down to like maybe 103 or 102 to see how accurate it is compared to my instant read thermometer here. Okie dokie, so reviewing the footage, the end does show up. Currently the 105 is showing up. It's the instant read thermometer mentions. It doesn't really show up on video very well. No, it doesn't. <laughs> the instant read thermometer is mentioning that it is 103 currently, and there should be an indicator for 103. It's not doing that. My biggest complaint so far is that it's not obvious. It's, it's not super bright and distinguishable which of the of the temperatures you're at. Uh, I wish it was a little bit more obvious. Currently, I don't feel like this gives me the the confidence that I wouldn't want to have a thermometer around to also double check it with a, the, an actual thermometer. So I can't really fault the bag bug <laughs> all that much because this may not be, and this may not be exactly how these are intended to be using it. 105 degrees inside of water, inside of a bag may not be what these are actually reading. Maybe your skin is at a different temperature than the bag. So I have to take this experiment with a grain of salt. Not sure exactly why this one isn't working as well as the one on my head. The one on my head is actually working pretty good. Uh, it's showing th that I'm at a, at a good temperature. I'm trying another location, although this isn't quite in my armpit. See, I can see, I could read at a glance. Yeah, that is in. Um, so I think that at a glance, pretty good. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of discounting this experiment as maybe something uh, that uh, should, shouldn't be an experiment. But uh, I really like these. I think that this is a nice way for a parent to be able to monitor what's going on with their kid for 48 hours. Uh, I feel like this is a lot easier than taking a temperature with a standard thermometer and it's fun and clever. Now, all of the advertising for this seems to be directed for children. I don't see any reason why this wouldn't work for adults as well if you just wanted to stop taking your temperature so often. Uh, so that is fever bugs. Back to you guys. So obviously in the video, it doesn't really show up. And No, I, I couldn't see it at all. I can't really I tell. So in person, it's a little easier to tell but not a ton easier. Also, they're very shiny, which do not help. But so you can- Oh, I, I just see the N, right? Yeah. Is that what I'm looking for, the N? Right. So that N there does show up. It's easy to miss it. <laughs> and right. it's not as vibrant as I want. And that's exactly what I was seeing in person is that it works, but it is not nearly as definitive as I want it to be. I want to be able to look over, just like with the packaging, where you look over, you see a big bright in, and you know everything's fine, and then if it's any of the other colors, you know, it's obvious as well. So... Well, wait, the, the other colors, it would actually show you a temperature, right? Right, the other, well, the other colors are just 
tan, but it says inside of the color 99, 101, 105, oh, okay. and 103. So okay. it would it would display, if I can get this to focus, there you go, it would oh, display it oh, I the see. Yeah. Okay. actual okay. temperature there within a, okay. a degree or so. So it's not the product that I wanted it to be. <laughs> I thought that it would be very easy to understand and, you know, just amazing. You don't have to take your kid's temperature all the time. This is great. Um, but it didn't really work that great. Um, here it is on Amazon. It's inexpensive. Six bucks. Uh, a whole bunch of reviews. So a whole bunch of people have, oh, have not, used Not it. too bad. Not too, too bad at all. Um, so there you go. It's kind of like a thing that would be fun to test out, but also have a real thermometer around nearby just in case, <laughs> because I don't trust it. Here, I'm gonna pull this uh, product camera off and I'll just point it right at my head. So there you go. That's kind of the, uh, that's what I was experiencing downstairs. Oh yeah, maybe this is the thing to wear in the city so people can see your temperatures normal. <laughs> I am not infected. I swear. Uh, not and they infected. won't be so, yeah. And you know what, Chad? You're looking for a new look. <laughs> I you think you just found it. One thing I will say is when I took this off earlier, it was kind of amazing how quickly it faded away. So you can see oh, the yeah, difference it's there. Oh, yeah, it's gone. It's gone. And yeah. then sticking it back on, it's oh, there. Oh, it's back. Yeah. So that, w th that gave me a little bit of confidence in it that, Seeing the difference between <laughs> on and off. Sorry, I'm trying to uh, mitigate all of the uh, lights and stuff mm. like that. There it goes. It's off. Or there it was on, I mean. Right. And there it is off. So you can see Look that there is a fairly large difference. Yeah. In, um, and now the stickiness is all gone, so it's not really sticking anymore. But there you go. Yeah. Flip it also tells me that my is... mood is, uh, is, I don't know. Naughty. <laughs> Naughty. There you go. Yes. <laughs> uh, there you go. Fever bugs for $6 and change on Amazon with varying degrees of success. With that, let's move on to Dick's Gadget Warehouse. <laughs> They're geeky and they're goofy, together they are loopy. When gadgets pass away, he takes them out to play. In Dick's Gadget Warehouse. Popcorn. Our video this week is from Buddy Yates, Palm Springs, who said, I bought this gadget. I didn't expect it to work, but it works very well. So here's Buddy's video. Hey, Dick. Hey, Chad. Buddy Yates from downtown Palm Springs. I got a gadget recently called Smart Dry. It's a device that goes into your gas or electric clothes dryer. And oh. it tells you with an app on your phone when your clothes are dry. The humidity sensor that goes inside the dryer has a couple of small magnets on it and a sealed battery compartment. And it fits inside the dryer. The only problem I've had with it is lint wants to collect behind <laughs> it. But uh, other than that, it hasn't budged at all. Wow. So you plug the little transmitter in somewhere near the dryer and uh, it's USB powered. So I have it plugged into a USB adapter, and uh, boy, it keeps sending notifications telling you when the clothes are dry. You download the Smart Dry app and put it on your phone. Fill your dryer as usual. It'll tell you when the clothes are dry. It'll tell you when the clothes are very dry. If you allow it to send notifications, it'll alert you when your clothes are dry. Yep, they're dry. 
I paid 50 bucks back in November and last time I checked it's still 50 bucks. I, uh, I hope that all the Gizwiz viewers, Dick and Chad, all stay healthy. I intend to. Uh, take care, guys. All right. Cool. Very nice. Like Very that. good. Yeah. I couldn't tell if uh, he was kind of like hinting that maybe it was sending one or two more notifications than it needed. <laughs> it's like it sends <laughs> a lot of notifications. <laughs> Um, well, it, se it seemed like there was an awful lot of options on it. So yeah, definitely. you can just choose. Just tell me when it's perfectly done and yeah. I should go in and get them. Yeah. Um, it's always so, so frustrating when you've just gotten a close, you know, a set dried and you go in and they're still soggy and you're like, oh, oh no. Or you have clothes that have, are so bone dry, you wonder, e, have I been just <laughs> running this thing into the ground? Am I going to get electrocuted when yeah, I try exactly. and separate these? <laughs> Exactly. The static electricity. Uh, buddy, great. Uh, yeah, great so, job. buddy, I'll send you a, um, the latest Mad Magazine, and I'll send you another uh, Alfred E. Newman picture. And I think that's the last of the videos we have here on hand, except for uh, Mo. So we're looking for more videos. Okay, we need one for next week. A uh, video about any kind of gadget, old, new, you hated it, you loved it, uh, or liked it a lot, like Buddy did. Uh, make a video, one to three minutes, horizontal uh, uh, plane, like uh, Buddy did, and just make sure we can hear you. And email the URL, uh, uh, upload it to YouTube. You can click on list it if you only want people with the URL to, to uh, see it. And email us that URL from YouTube, mail at gizwiz.tv. And if you live in the U.S., you'll get a, the current MAD, a 38-year-old Alfred E. Newman photo, both autographed to you from me. And if you live outside the U.S., we'd love to have your video. I'll sign a picture to you and then send you a high-res image to print out where you are anywhere in the world. You don't even have to go outdoors to do it. Uh, but he does uh, say it does get rather insistent. His, it was uh, his comment. On oh, he's in the, the chat room. Oh, yeah, great. he's in the chat. Yes. Yeah, oh, that's yeah. great. It gets that's insistent great. about its yeah. uh, notifications. <laughs> Buddy, thank you for that. That's great. Yeah, that is awesome. With that, let's move on to the letter. And our letter's from Margo, who I believe is also in the chat room. Uh, last Thursday, Rachel Maddow did another segment on the Kinza Thermometer app. It shows fever tracking. It, has, it shows a fever tracking map of the United States, and they were tracking the virus. And the hot, hottest spot is Florida. Hmm. Uh, that's all I have. She says, Margot Laurie. And you know what? It looks like you have nothing out your way. <laughs> Not yet. If, I would like to imagine you that know, there I was, thought, it's I like thought California across. was also. Yeah. What happened to Seattle and stuff? That was supposed Didn't to be it big... start in Seattle? I don't know. Yeah. A, yeah. Interesting. Updated though. March 22nd. So it's only uh, four days old. That is so cool, though, that they're taking all this data that they have and uh, making, um, you know, making this data available and kind of showing it off. Like, hey, now that there's this crazy pandemic, look at where the, uh, the hottest spots are. That's so interesting. And there's yeah. very few times that this amount of data or this type of data in this fashion would be usable. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how many times has everybody come down with the thing at the same with time? With the same, yes, it's the same thing, and and that it's so crucial to know it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That you know so how many of those things on your head they would need to be able to <laughs> tell that? Yeah, and it would be so dumb; it wouldn't be able to, you know, make a website sort of situation. No, from no, that. not not with paper. Um, that is so crazy. I'm trying to see if on their website they have any. I think on their website they just have a health. They didn't have that particular one. Yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe. maybe oh, they've added yeah. it now. Do, do, do. Oh, this is the U.S. health weather map. Oh, I guess this is. Huh. 
doesn't seem this trends observed. Uh, no. I don't know what map the other thing was on. Well, look at that. Oh yeah, no, I had to go search it out. Yeah. But yeah, it's very strange that nothing on the west coast. I mean, it's great. There's nothing you're in the middle of the country. Yeah. I mean, like apparently, uh, <laughs> it's like Colorado and New Mexico this is the best place to be. Yeah, you could probably go shopping there. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, over here, this is not very observed. This is so interesting to see. Well, just up here in Maine, it's just so cold that the temperatures never Nothing get can high. Add, yeah. That's the problem. Yeah. Oh, like and that. by the way, the, the, uh, Kenza makes thermometers of every right. kind. Right. Let's see. If so that that's why they know uh, what they yeah. are. They have some, here's some of their products oh, yeah, they and stuff. Go. Right. Right. For babies and the Bluetooth and yeah, very interesting. I lo yeah. love seeing that. Use a big data so I can actually comprehend it and use it. It's cool. Perfect. Uh, with that, I want to say hey, thank you to our patrons, Patreon.com/slash/Gizwiz. You guys are incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much, especially during these trying times, for supporting the Gizwiz. Thank you so, so, so much for your support. If you like the Gizwiz, please consider giving back over at Patreon.com slash Gizwiz. If Patreon is not your thing and you don't want to give via Patreon, you can give via PayPal at our website, gizwiz.tv. Click on the Patreon tab and uh, there's a PayPal link there on that page. Speaking of gizwiz.tv, that's where you can watch the show live just about every Thursday, 4.30 Pacific, 7.30 Eastern Time. Uh, we should be on Thursday moving forward. So if we ever have any schedule changes, it'll be at the top of the website. And then if you don't catch a show, don't worry. You can catch all of our previous shows there at gizwiz.tv. Head on over to gizwiz.biz because that's where Dickie D writes up fantastic articles about all of the gadgets that we cover. While you're there browsing all those articles, play What the Heck Is It? It's the game show online where we try to decide what gadget this is. This is the whole gadget, not just a piece or a part. And you have to guess what is that thing? Uh, this is obvious to me that this is a, 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 a what do they call it? A l lunge? A lounge? Oh, when's that Olympic sport where you are in like a, a, Sled that goes super fast. Oh, uh, lunge. Oh, round. yeah. Is it lunge? Lunge chat room. It's a lunge, lunge sled, but for a Minecraft character. That's why all their angles are just so la luge. Luge. luge, luge, luge. Yeah, man, one syllable off. Luge. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's a luge for a Minecraft character. Oh, honest. okay. There you go. That's not bad. Yeah. If you think you know what this gadget is, get a guess on over gizwiz.biz. Thank you, chat room, for correcting me. Uh, there are six Mad Magazines for correct answers, but 12 Mad Magazines for clever, hilarious, funny, and, believe it or not, incorrect answers. So get a guess on over at gizwiz.biz. Uh, that about wraps it up for uh, our I show. have a question for you. Yeah. Your gadget last week, the Snee, what was it? The Sneeze? The sneeve. Where did I put the it? The Sneeve. Yeah, okay. Do you remember how much okay. you paid for the Sneeze? I can go look that up. Um, I, don't I could have sworn you said it was nine ninety nine. Yeah, I thought so. For seven. And I'll tell you why. Has it gone, FD. Has it gone up? Yeah. Uh, so I paid... I'm looking at the receipt right here. I paid $9.99 and I got seven. Okay. Uh, so I thought, oh, you know what? This might be something fun to talk to um, uh, with Leo. Yeah. And I'd buy, I'd buy it. So I go online. They're 15 bucks. What? Oh. Uh, so they the went up. bump. Apparently. Yeah. They've uh, yeah, raised they, their they prices. They went up by, thir by 33 and a third percent. Wait a second, though. I'm here and it's, it's bubbling me. It says uh, 10 bucks for me. Wait a minute. Why did I pay 15? <laughs> oh, no. And I bought two of them because it was free shipping. How did I get... Uh, Buy two and get free shipping. I don't yeah, know. no, I paid thirty dollars 
plus tax. Uh, anyway, I'm glad it's back to nine nine. Maybe yeah. someone complained. Weird. Maybe someone complained. And you got it right away. You said right. I got it really quickly. It wasn't it wasn't Amazon fast, but it was the next best thing. It was it was within yeah, okay. a few days. Here I can actually see this. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. No, because it, I, I think it says we send priority mail uh, if you order it before three. So I ordered it before three Monday, but I don't have it yet. So I'm hoping yeah. uh, it's deductible. So I checked out. <laughs> I don't have any money to deduct it from, buddy. <laughs> Uh, I checked it out at midnight, basically on the twelfth. So you could you could claim that I bought it on the thirteenth, right? Yeah. And it arrived on the sixteenth. So oh, okay, three days, three days. Three days later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, we probably overwhelmed them when we uh, when you did your video. <laughs> Everybody went there, and they weren't. Fifteen dollars seems like a good price. Yeah. Uh, anyway, I'm yeah. glad it's back to nine ninety nine. Yeah. Um, okay. Everybody, so wash your hands, stay safe, and we'll see you next week. I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs>